So today we continue our series on heaven, on visiting heaven. And what does that feel like? What does that look like? How can we understand it better? So with the hope that the Lord can bring some comfort to us as we think about our process in life and think about those who have passed on before us. So last week we spoke about the world of spirits, that halfway place between heaven and hell where we first go. And it's a place where we arrive and we bring this life with us into that world of spirits. And we are the people we are today. We will take that and be those people in the, spirit, in the world of spirits. But the Lord then takes us around from group to group, from community to community, and through the process of meeting other spirits in that world, He reveals to us and shows us who we really are. What are those things, those loves in us that make us who we really are? So if we are good, we have a love for, for caring, for reaching out, for giving to other people. But if we are selfish on the inside, then it's all about me and what I can take and get from the world. And so we see that the Lord then starts to show different pathways for different people. For those who love to give and love to be caring, the pathways of heaven open up to them. And for those who are more selfish and, and greedy in nature, the pathways leading to hell open up. So we're going to take it, what is next? That's today's question. So there's two pathways. We see the Lord leading people in two different ways. What next? Let me ask this question. We're going to look at the pathways leading to hell first. So if someone is on the road to hell, is the Lord forcing them? Is the Lord forcing people to hell? Is the Lord pushing them into hell? Is the Lord damning people into hell? And the answer is no. The Lord doesn't want anyone to go to hell. The Lord creates us all to go to heaven, and that's where He wants us all to go. But you know what the Lord has also given us? Is freedom to choose. And that's what He protects to the utmost. That's so important to the Lord. He loves us so much that He allows us to choose to go to hell if we want to. And the Lord lets us in our freedom choose to go to hell. So the Lord doesn't damn anyone to hell. He doesn't push anyone to hell. He doesn't send anybody to hell. We choose, if we are selfish in nature, to go to hell. I want to read to you from the book Heaven and Hell, number 512. For people who are entering hell, their second state is also their third. So the first state of entering the world of spirits is taking this life into that next world. The second stage is the Lord opening up our lives to us that we can see who we really are at our core. And the third stage then is what we're talking about. So those going to hell, the end of the second stage is the third stage as well. And ends in turning straight towards their own love. That's an interesting way of, of, of putting it. At the end of stage two, those people who are going to hell turn straight towards their own love. They turn inwards. All they can see is themselves, what they want, what their needs are and therefore towards the hellish communities that is engaged in a love like their own. So those going to hell turn inwards into their own love and love themselves only, and then go and find a community in hell that is like that love. So that's the path for those who are going to hell. But there's also the pathway that leads to heaven. So what happens to those people who choose to go to heaven? 
Let me ask this question. Do you think you know everything you need to know about heaven? Do you know everything you need to know about heaven? No. Adults, no. I don't. So the third stage is about learning and preparing for heaven. And you might say, oh, no. More learning. I thought I'd finished that. I thought my life in this world was all about learning, and now I've got to learn some more. But let me ask you another question. Do you like to learn law? Anybody here a law, like to learn and study the law and order and do's and don'ts? They're not many people. Some people do. They become lawyers, but most of us, that's not our thing. But let me ask a question. Are you looking forward to driving a car one day? Desa, are you looking forward to driving a car one day? I'm sure you are. I'm sure, as adults, can you remember when you were at that age of, of, learn, of driving a car, were you, were you excited about it? Right, kids, you excited about driving a car one day? Yeah, right, we're excited about it. And when we're excited about it, we learn about it. We learn about the rules of the road and which side to drive and what all the signs mean. And, and we really willingly learn and write the test so that we can get to drive. Right? When we have something that we're excited about and love, then we learn very easily. And so this is the third stage at the, that is on the way to heaven. Before we enter heaven, there's an excitement about going to heaven. We have a love in us that wants to be in heaven, and we're excited about it, and the Lord then teaches us. I want to read to you what it says in Heaven and Hell, number 517. Since love is their nature, so those spirits that are going up to heaven, since love is their nature, they are constantly breathing in a desire to know what is true. Now, how important is breathing to us? Right, if you're running around and you're excited, how hard do you breathe? <sighs> right, you're really breathing. If you have to hold your breath while you're excited, you'd, you'd pass out very quickly. Right? That breath is important to us. We need it. We want it. It's, it's part of our life. And now you can imagine these spirits who are going into heaven being excited and they wanting to know all about heaven and they're, they're wanting to breathe it in, as it were, and to take it in to their life like it's, it's vital to them. For the sake, so they desire these not, to know what is true for the sake of constructive living. Another way of thinking of that is useful service, constructive living. Wanting to know what is true for constructive living, wanting to know what is true so that we can live a useful life. Continues, the Lord in fact sees to it that we love the constructive activities that suit our gifts. Right? The Lord in fact sees to it that we love the constructive activities that suit our gifts. And now we all have gifts. The Lord has given us all gifts in so many ways. We have things that we can give to this world, whether it's through the, uh, the activities of our bodies, whether we are crafty or, or creative, the things of our mind, the way we think, the loves from our heart, the way that we, we reach out to other people. Many ways, many gifts that the Lord gives to each of us. And He wants us to have constructive activities that accord with our gifts. The Lord wants constructive activities that suit our gifts. And isn't that the life that we live here? We love doing the things, or we love having things to do that suit our loves. When we are, are enjoy being crafty, we get involved in craft. If we're creative, we want to paint, we want to draw, we want somehow express that. That's the Lord's kingdom. It's about that useful activity, that constructive activity. So that phase of learning and preparing for heaven is the Lord telling us 
all the ways, teaching us all the truth, true ideas that help us express that love that we have in heaven. And that's the phase of instruction and preparation, teaching us how to express that love and excitement and joy and happiness that we feel outwards to other people. That is the preparation the Lord does in the third phase that allows us to be prepared to enter into that life of heaven, to be useful, to have activities that accord with the gifts that we have. So what are the things that you love? What are your gifts? And how do we as a church create a similar environment? How do we take the idea that the Lord gives us here about providing constructive activities so people can express their gifts? How do we create that within the church? How do we allow people's love to be expressed in the life of the church? So what is your love? And how would you like that to be expressed in the life of the church? If you have some ideas, I'd love to know. Amen.